Hello, welcome to another Easify video. And today I'm going to be talking to you about how you can go from zero, i.e. having no software installed at all, to installing Easify Pro, setting it up, processing some transactions, and generating and submitting a VAT return to HMRC using Making Tax Digital, and all in under 15 minutes. Now this is going to be a fast paced video, so I'm not going to dwell on any of the details. If you do have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments below. As I said, this video is going to be quick, and it's intended to give you a really brief overview of how you can use Easify to manage your VAT returns in conjunction with Making Tax Digital. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is install Easify Pro. Now, I've already downloaded Easify Setup to the desktop. Um, I won't show you how to do that. You can just go to our website and hit the downloads link for that one. So we'll double click that to run it. And in a moment, it'll start up. So we'll accept that and wait for the uh, initialization to complete. The Easify Pro setup is just going to do a few checks before it gets going. Okay, so on the first page, we click next. And then we, we read and agree with the end user license agreement. And then Easify setup will detect existing installations. We don't have any, so it's gone straight to the select installation type page. Now I'm going to be connecting to an Easify cloud server. So in that case, you would have purchased your Easify cloud server subscription. We do all the setup for you. And then you begin at this point just to install the Easify Pro client. So you don't need Easify Pro and server because this is going to be using the Easify cloud server. So we click on Easify Pro clients and we click on next. Just accept the default path there. Click next. And Easify Pro gets installed. It's a very quick installation process. So we click on finished. And then we have a shortcut to Easify Pro on the desktop. So we double click that, launch Easify Pro. And it's come back and told us that no Easify servers were found on your local network. Would you like to look for a remote Easify server online? So we'll click yes to that because we're using the Easify Cloud Server. So here I'll put in my username. And my password. Click on discover. And this will go off and find my Easify Cloud Server. And at this point, we can log in. So I'll put in my password and we'll log in. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is configure our VAT settings. So we go to Tools, VAT Settings, and I'm just going to tick the box that says My Company is VAT Registered. That just tells Easify that we're registered for VAT and to show things like VAT columns and VAT settings on products and things like that. Uh, all the other things we'll just leave at default. And what we will need is our VAT registration number. So I'm just going to paste that in there. And uh, that's required by making tax digital the VAT registration number. So you need to put that in. And then we're going to click on the authorize for HMRC making tax digital button. And when we do that, it takes us off to the HMRC website. And this is how you can authorize Easify Pro to access your online HMRC accounts. So we we'll click on continue and we need to sign in. So I've got a, a test user account here that I can use for this demonstration. Let me just grab that and pop the uh, details in. Obviously, you put in your own credentials here at this stage. And then we sign in and we're asked to give authority to interact with HMRC on your behalf. So we'll grant authority. And if it's successful, you get taken to our website and it'll tell you HMRC success. Congratulations, you have successfully authorized Easify Pro to access your HMRC online VAT data. So, okay, we can close that window now. And you can see in the background, we're now authorized for HMRC Making Tax Digital. So we click OK to that. It tells us you've changed your VAT registration status to VAT registered. Would you like Easify to update all of your products to use the default VAT rate? Uh, we don't need to do that because we haven't entered any products yet. So we'll just say no to that. And now we're ready for the next stage, which is to add some products. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a product because we want to be able to raise a sale and have that on our VAT return. So we'll open the products window, the main products window. And if you click on add product, a little wizard will pop up or wizard, little little window telling you what you need to do. So there's a few things you need to set up. And this is really simple to do. The first thing we need is manufacturers. So we'll click on add manufacturers and we'll add a manufacturer. Every product needs a manufacturer. Even if you don't need to record it, you can just put in something like generic here as a manufacturer. So we'll just put a name in there for a manufacturer for now and we'll close that. We need to add a supplier. 
because products need to have suppliers. So I'll open suppliers window, we'll add a supplier and we'll just call them ACE supplies. And we don't need to fill in all the rest at this stage, that's okay. And then finally it says we need to add product categories and product subcategories. So we'll close the window and then over here where we've got the product category list, we click on add new product category and I'm going to add a category called batteries. Click OK, expand that. We've got a new category and then I'm going to add a subcategory and we'll call that rechargeable. OK, that. And I'll click on the category and then we can add a product. Now, Easyfy asks us on the first product we add, it asks us what uh, SKU number we add. In other words, which, or which stock code it wants to use. So we're just going to go with the default setting of 100,000 as our first stock code, but you could change that if you wanted to. And you only get asked this the once, so um, it won't pop up every time. We'll OK that. For our description, we'll put, say, AAA battery. AAA battery. Leave everything at the default settings for the moment. On pricing, we'll say we have a cost price of, say, 5, and a retail price X VAT of say 10, just nominal numbers, just for a demonstration. And we click OK to that. And we've now added a product to Easify. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a customer because we want to raise a sale. We want someone on the system that we can sell something to. So we'll add a customer, Mr. Test Bloke. We use him a lot. Uh, click OK. And we now have a customer on the system. And we're going to right click. The customer and we're going to say create new quote slash order and once again because it's the first time through it's going to ask us what order number we want to start with you could change this if you want but we'll just click ok and we have an order you have a new order let me just open that up a bit so you can see it a bit better uh so we have a new order and an order always starts as a quote in progress again we'll cover that in more detail in future videos or you can go to our online help system and read all about that and this is just a test order, imaginative name there. And the customer is Mr. Test Bloke because we created a uh, quote slash order for him. And we're going to add a product. So I'll click on the search for product button and there's our product. So we'll add that onto the order. Uh, I'm just gonna click apply and change, save my changes. It's worth saving your changes as you go. I'm gonna change it to an in progress order, which means it's actually becomes an order then, and not just a quote. I'm gonna change the quantity of the products to say 20, just so that we've got some numbers here. You can see we've got the subtotal 200, VAT at 40, and the total is 240. And what we need to do now to get this to show on the VAT return is we go to the billing tab, and because we're using standard VAT accounting, a sale is liable on your VAT return based on when it was invoiced for. So we're gonna set the invoice date for this order. So we'll say we've invoiced it. And what I'll need to do, because we're using the HMRC test system for this demonstration, all of their test data is from April 2017 to June 2017. So we need to just change the invoice date to tie in with uh, their test data, really. Obviously, this would be a real invoice date for you if you were using uh, using this for real. So we'll set the invoice date to 1st of April 2017 and we'll click OK. So there we go. We just raised a sale in Easify and recorded the VAT for it. And you notice how it's automatically done the VAT for us. It's automatic. We didn't have to do anything to the VAT. Easify just knows how much VAT you've charged and therefore how much you can um, put on your VAT return. So next we're going to raise a purchase. So to do that, we go to the purchases window and we click on add purchase. Again, because it's the first time through, the first time we've used Easify, it's gonna ask us which purchase number we wanna start with. We'll say okay to that, that's fine. And we're gonna say, um, let's say products for stock. We're gonna be a bit more imaginative on our purchase title. Uh, so we're gonna raise a purchase and we're gonna pick a supplier. So I'll click on the uh, supplier picker and we'll pick a supplies. I'll just apply that, uh, save changes. As I said, always good to save your work as you go along with these things. Um, and we need to add a product. So I'll click the product picker and we're gonna buy some AA batteries in and they cost five pounds each. I'm going to buy in 10 of those. So we're gonna buy 10 batteries. 
You can see it's again, it's worked out the VAT, the subtotal is 50, the VAT is 10, so the gross total is 60 pounds. And once again, we need to set the invoice date. So we go to the payments tab and we set the supplier invoice date. And again, we have to go and use uh, 2017 just for the demo. So we'll choose 1st of April, 2017 for the invoice date. We'll apply our changes and we'll click OK. And that's it, we've raised a purchase. Now bear in mind with purchases, um, I'll just show you raising a purchase for stock, which is the obvious one, you raise a purchase order to buy products for stock. You can raise purchases for rent, gas, motor costs, wages, you name it. So you can record all of your outgoings this way to raise purchases for them and set the invoice date to um, whenever you're invoiced for them. Okay, with that done, we're ready now to uh, do a VAT return. So we go to finances, click on VAT returns, and it tells us you do not have permission to view or edit VAT returns. Okay, I'll just show you how to get around that one, actually. You go to security and manage users, and you double click on the user you want to set permissions for. Uh, you click on the permissions tab. And if you notice here under accounts, there are two permissions. User is allowed to create, view, edit VAT returns, and user is allowed to submit VAT returns to HMRC. So we need to just enable both of those. Click OK. It tells us we need to log off and back on again. We can do that. We just click here to log off. And then we click here to log on. I'll pop in my password. And finances, VAT returns, lets us in this time. Okay. Right. You notice we don't have any VAT returns yet. So I'm going to click on the uh, start new VAT return button here. And it asks us, would we like to obtain a new VAT return from HMRC Making Tax Digital? Yes, we would. So click on yes. And at this stage, Easify goes off to HMRC, uh, logs into your online HMRC account, and it'll retrieve a list of all your VAT obligations. And a VAT obligation just being a uh, VAT return that you need to get completed. And here's one from 1st of April, 2017. So we'll click on that and we'll click OK. And this downloads the VAT return from HMRC and populates some of the information here. Now, the next thing we need to do is to actually generate the VAT return. You can see all the values are zero. So we click on the generate VAT return button. Easify goes off and calculates our VAT return. And these numbers will tie in with um, the values that we entered before. As you see, we had 200 pounds worth of sales XVAT and we made 50 pounds worth of purchases. So that results in a net VAT to be paid to HMRC of 30 pounds. Okay, now at this stage in real, in real life, you'd click on the export VAT return data to CSV file and we've got more information on that in another video. So we won't dwell on that here. But this would allow you to export all the calculations behind this and double check and get your accountant to check them. We're going to assume we've done all that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to upload the VAT return to HMRC or submit the VAT return. So I click on submit VAT return and it tells us to confirm that we want to submit the VAT return. And there's some information here that you can read. Again, we cover that in another video. So I'm just going to click on yes. And then you make one final confirmation. So we click on yes. And these will then go to HMRC and It'll come back to tell us VAT return submitted okay. You've just submitted your VAT return to HMRC using Making Tax Digital. It's as simple as that. So we click OK. Note there's a few more bits of information in the bottom here in the HMRC Making Tax Digital submission information box. Uh, it tells us the processing date, the form bundle number, payment indicator, I think DD is direct debit, and the charge reference number. Now obviously these will be different for you. These will be relevant, relevant to uh, what you're doing. Okay, we can close that now. So I hope you found this video on how to go from zero to MTD in 15 minutes useful. If you've got any questions about Easify and Making Tax Digital, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Or you can email us, support at easify.co.uk, and we'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. So until next time, thanks for watching.